Hey everybody, Yvonne here with Back to Earth Creations, and in this video we are going to be making another style of uh, polymer clay mushroom with a crystal in it, very similar to this one here, but very different also. Um, I'm going to be using the Cost Clay Glow. Now you could also use just regular old Sculpey, but I'm really enjoying using Cost Clay because it's a little bit more affordable than Sculpey um ounce by ounce and it has a really nice flexibility to it after it's been baked um which i really like for jewelry purposes because i want you know i'd very much rather my stuff wiggle than break off so just something to kind of keep in mind um so let's go ahead and get into it <clears throat> and my work surface is quite disheveled so bear with me there it is. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cut off just a bit. Ah, drop, I missed it again. There's this, the same mosquito has been hunting me all day. Um, and, uh, well, it's winning. <laughs> I'm coming through with an acrylic roller, just kind of flattening this out. I do my initial conditioning because it can be a little crumbly. I do my initial conditioning with an acrylic roller and just by hand. But once you get it a little heated up, just smushing together in your hands, it becomes really quite pl pliable and supple. So I'm just gonna come through and you can see already, just like that, it becomes very squish. <laughs> okay. And so, my favorite method of conditioning clay is the fold and roll. There will be links down to everything in the video description. Some of them are affiliate links, so if you purchase through them, it helps support our channel at no additional cost to you. But it's also just a great starting point for, you know, if you're interested in getting into working with polymer clay, but don't really know where to start. Those are the same tools and things that I use, but are in no way the only tools. So they may not be perfect for you, but it will hopefully be helpful to you in getting you started uh, in finding what is perfect for you. So I'm going to pick out a little crystal. I love that one. Okay, that one's really nice. I also really like this one. Like, I just, I don't know how big I want this to be. I'm going to use this. Whoop, I'm going to use that one. It is super durable. I'm just going to put those back into their container. You can also use raw crystals. Um, you don't have to put a crystal in the bottom at all. So lots and lots of options. So this one has a hole drilled in it. So I was going to use this as an opportunity to kind of put a little bit of an armature wire through. I'm cutting off about seven inches of 18 gauge craft wire, and this is Parawire brand. But I'm just gonna bring this up I've put, it's a little too thick to have fit through the crystal all the way, but I just put the end in there and then twisted it up and around, and then I'm going to give it a little bit of a bend right there. And this is going to be, I'm going to use the box hinge of these pliers to bend that off to the side, and I've got a new puppy, so I need to go take her out real quick. Alrighty, so we have our wire shaped around in a way where it is stabilized into our crystal. Um, if you do not have a crystal with a hole in it, we do have another tutorial um, that just has undrilled crystals that I recommend checking out because the techniques are basically the same uh, for like using a head pin to go through the cap. Instead of using a head pin in this one, I'm just having the wire go all the way through. So I have here a ball that's about three quarters of an inch or 20 millimeters or so in diameter. It's not super specific. Um, 
because we may end up removing quite a bit of it as well. But just to give you a frame of reference for how much I'm working with, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take a bit off of there. So it ends up being <clears throat> about a half inch. And you could go larger or smaller. So I'm just going to thread our clay roughly onto our wire because we can always shape it around a little bit more and I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to use <clears throat> a ball stylus to start sculpting this onto our crystal And I'm going to give myself a little bit more material for going over where the wire is. And then we can even, if you want it very smooth, you can go over it with your finger. And you can just keep working the clay. It has no time limit um, for working with it. Sometimes I'll work with it a bit and then let it kind of cool down because if it gets warm from my hands. Um, but you don't have to worry about it air drying. It won't dry and, or it won't be cured until it's been baked. Which this bakes at 275. Where's one that has not been torn up? <laughs> Do not microwave. Um, I'm baking it at 275. Bake for 30 minutes at 275 per quarter inch or six millimeters. So uh, it bakes perfectly right alongside um, Sculpey, actually. And now I'm going to go through with my small stylus end, and I just want to start adding some little. Let's get the shape on this more where we want it to be. So I'm going to start by just very gently tracing out some spirals. And this is what I wanted to, wanted to demonstrate for this project, <clears throat> is uh, this part. And so it re pulls a little bit of the material off with it, so I just glob it onto our scrap clay. Well, it's not scrap, it's just the unused clay. And then we can make our indentations a little deeper. And then I'm going to come in here, start sculpting around. There we go. And really, you can sculpt in whatever pattern and design you like. There's no rules with stuff like this, you guys. Just have fun with it. <laughs> when stuff starts to get a little messy, like how it is right there, I just come in and tap it with my finger. And I like to have the spirals going in different directions, and then I also like to do just a little, almost like a seed pod. Like if these are little flowers growing up the sides, like a flowerscape. So there's that one. And then I'm going to have it go like around again just go in nice and slow and steady there's no point in rushing this I mean sculpting it's the fun part anyways so more importantly than anything have fun so there's that then we can do another little seed pod 
so just a little spot and then we can even have this one be a little wiggly coming down and then I'm going to do another spiral here And the lighter you trace, the more you can decide whether or not you're very committed to that element being right there. And so I like having the wire to hold on to as well as the crystal to hold on to so I can be working with the clay without really touching it um whereas on this one i didn't really do that but that's because it didn't have nearly so much detail in the uh in the stem part of the mushroom there we go yeah i'm gonna do another little spiral here in the other direction i like having my spirals grow go both ways, like every which way if I can. And so you can see here on the side how there's like little crumbly bits. You can just kind of tap those. I don't mind there being a little bit of a raised edge, but I don't want it to get like crummy. So just a little bit of tapping does a whole lot to help with the crumbs. Okay, so now I'm going to do that one there and this one here. So we're actually just going to have a little two split. So two little seed pods, for lack of a better term, off of one stem. And I love it. So now through any distortion that may have happened, we can come through, deepen some of these lines, widen some of them, but also I'm going to come through with the end of a porcupine quill and start deepening these even further. I want something nice and sharp and narrow. So you could use a T-pin, you could use a bit of wire, you could use a needle. Um, safety pin, literally, like whatever you want, you guys. So just carving in a little deeper, and then just kind of cutting a little line, just a nice deep line, because we're going to be going through and painting this, and the paint that we're using really makes some cool effects whenever um, you put some water on it, like we're going to do a little bit of a separating effect that I think is going to be really cool. So having, um, whenever I pull off little flecks of like um, dog fur or rubbish or dirt or whatever, um, I like to just put it into the trash. So I forget what I was saying. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the paint that we put over this is going to settle into these ni lines nicely, so I want to keep them clear of any little goobies. And to just, there we go, trace them in. Excellent. And so now from here, I'm going to do just a little bit of like texturing from the tip of the cap, or rather where the, the tip of the stem where the cap will be attaching.
Now we do have an option of baking here with it just like this and then adding the cap. Um, I think I'm just going to do it all in one step. So any space in between the other little bit of sculpting that we did, I'm just adding some very light, very subtle texture. Just because this clay is quite soft and I'd rather it have an intentional texture than just my fingerprints. Now they do have stiffer um, versions of the cost clay, but as far as I'm aware, they don't have a stiffer version of the glow cost clay. So, and it's that glow that I'm really going for. So now we've done that, I'm just going to put a little bit of a twist into it. There we are. And now I'm going to use my mandrel pliers to just there on the end and I'm going to be trimming that bit off but I just want something that I can hang it from because you can see this is my work surface here but right here I can hang it and it's not going to be touching anything it's just going to be hanging out stiffening up I want to let it get back to not my hand temperature but room temperature so now we're going to be working on the cap and to do that I'm just rolling another ball of clay about the same size and I'm going to use the bottom of a mold. So let's see. Where, where's a mold? <laughs> um, here we go. Oops, this is just like a fondant mold from on Amazon. And the back's kind of dirty with pet fur and stuff, but you know, welcome to my craft room. <laughs> so I'm going to use this to press my and you don't have to do this the reason why I'm doing this is so I can remove it easily without having to because if I were to press this down here on my work surface then it can distort a little when I delaminate so I'm just gonna smush this down and we can kind of come in here and square up the edges like if we wanted a very very round mushroom cap and that can kind of help get that shape down and then we can just come through and so you could have your mushroom cap be very rounded you could have it be much more of like a um, kind of a witch's hat or gnome hat shape and I'm just taking it and grabbing between my finger and thumb and rolling. And that's going to smooth out that cut edge into more of a domed shape. Now this is still very mm, rough, <laughs> but that's fine. Um, I'm going to come through with the next size up of ball stylus. You could use, I mean, even like the... If you take like a chopstick or something and put it into a pencil sharpener and then sand the tip down a little bit, you can make a whole lot of uh, different sized tools. So you don't have to buy a ball stylus. You know, it's, if there's a crafter, there's a way. You can even sculpt your own texturing tools out of polymer clay. And so I'm just coming around the edges very, very lightly because we can always add deeper detail later. I just want to add a little bit of something there around that edge. because I think that's going to give us something really nice for our paint to settle into whenever we do that effect on this. 
Okay, so actually I've changed my mind again. I'm gonna come through and I'm going to pinch this around like this just so to give it a little bit crisper of an edge. So again, just, and you can even use the side of a silicone mold if you want to shape without getting your fingerprints on it. And I actually find it really helps me to get a much more consistent cap. So now we've done that, I'm going to set it on the mold and coming in at varying depths like sometimes I'm close to the edge sometimes I'm much closer in to the tip of the cap and I'm just turning and coming around now any bit of like dark dirty fingerprints or like weird filth from my filthy craft room um, <laughs> can be sanded off after baking so don't sweat it and then I'm actually going to start with some little tapping to do some little dot spots which I'm not seeking any sort of realism sorry wandering out of frame there um, this is a purely fantastical mushroom so you can make it however you want it to look then I'm going to come through and use the larger ball size But I just wanted to make like a nice lumpy warty little mushroom. And then I've got another ball stylus size still coming around, having that be quite close to the edge. There we are. So again, I really, I really enjoy that texture. And now we're going to flip this over. And I'm going to use a porcupine quill to start in the center and just do some shallow lines at first. I like to just break it down into quadrants and then split each half into a half. And these are not very deep to start with, and that is okay. Because you'll be surprised at how shallow of a line paint can settle into. And as I add in more lines, I just don't have it come as deep into the center because I find that it just kind of muddies the effect that I'm going for. There we go. So that's a good start. Let's see if we can't deepen in some of these lines. So I'm just kind of rolling it around and adding in deeper lines. Now these shallow lines are still going to be there, but this is gonna give us some nice deep bold lines. Okay, so there we have that. We can kind of tap in, and I'm holding this very gently with my fingertips but we can kind of tap them in a little bit and then I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna hold my finger and thumb like this and then press on that edge. So I'm gonna put my thumb where my finger was and then position my finger and then press up and that gives us a really nice wavy, so again, right where my finger was is where my thumb is going. And I press up and then 
will just continue all the way around. And it just makes a couple of little, little like wavy lines. Okay, so now I'll set that down before I overwork it. <laughs> and I'm going to grab our little mushroom. I'm going to trim off the hooked end because I want a nice straight wire that I'm going to hold by the crystal. And I have my oven preheating to 275. I'm going to go ahead and push this through and on down. Whoop, wasn't even in frame really. My bad. And I'm just going to give this some smushing. And we can crimp our cap just a little bit. Now you could add a little skirt onto this if you wanted or you know any elements that make you happy. But I think I'm good with that exactly as it is right there. Now you can see that we've got a little bit of a hole from where it's wiggled side to side. I like to just come in with the back of my fingernail and compress that in or you could use like a ball stylus there we go now we also have the option if this is very messy for you um, you could bake the cap separate and then just use a petite drill bit to drill into the cap to then thread the wire through if you just want to avoid that entirely. And now what I'm going to do, let's zoom out because I'm going to be baking this on a ceramic tile and I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to bend and then bend. And this has just made us a little kickstand that isn't quite high enough because we want to not be pressing down ah, on the edge of our mushroom. There we go. <laughs> so here you can see how our kickstand is working. And you can see that little bit of gap of space so that the mushroom cap is not touching um, our surface. And I'm going to go bake this for... 30 minutes. Our mushroom is now fully baked and cooled out of the oven. We could have, something we could have done that I didn't really touch on previously is we could have put um, Perlex pigments or you know um, solar dust or any sort of thing. We could have, or even chalk pastels, we could have kind of brushed it up onto the um, mushroom itself to add some detail but I wanted to show you guys a really cool effect that we can get just with these Lumiere halo blue gold paint or it's Lumiere paint by Jacquard and this color I'm using is the halo blue gold and I am gonna say I do think that one is my favorite I've lost my favorite. there it is um so what we're gonna do is we're going to start by just completely painting our little mushroom So really just burnishing it down into every little nook and cranny. Especially on those spirals that we had made in these little like seed potty parts. And we want to be relatively quick about this because we don't want the paint to have an opportunity to dry. In fact, I am going to go ahead and get a little bit of water onto my brush just to start moving things around a little bit more and we are going to get this settled into the cap and some folks will want less is more and some folks are going to want more is more and that's okay. The only right way to do this is your way of doing it. So don't feel pressure for it to come out any particular sort of way. 
And so here you can see we could just paint the whole thing like this and be done, which is not bad. I mean, it's pretty. But if we come in and we just start, I'm going to do this over our cup of water because I am going to now start strategically lifting our pigment with using a wet brush. I'm going to be burnishing it off <clears throat> of our clay and then kind of just, oh gosh, and I'm not even in frame. I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, but you can see here, I'm just rubbing in and then you just touch with some of the water and it'll come and pull down so I'm gonna do that same thing here on the stem of our mushroom I'm so sorry I never mean to be out of frame yet here we are <laughs> and then I just let it kind of dr and you can see already how it's starting to really give some cool effects and I do like to make sure that it doesn't stabilize on the crystal or not stabilize but that it, it doesn't settle and dry on the crystal you can even see just the swirling of our paint water so pretty and I don't think I have any paper towels over here by me but that would have been very very useful um, for just blotting off some of that excess moisture so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to hang this and let it dry uh, again keeping an eye and making sure that I'm keeping that crystal clean because I mean on such a pretty crystal on any crystal really I don't want to be covering up that beautiful Aurora finish or anything like that I want that to shine out nice and bright okay so yeah we're gonna hang this and then I'll show it to you when we're done now also this is a really good opportunity to go ahead and straighten out the, our wire from where we had made a little bit of a kickstand and I'm just gonna make a little hook using my either mandrel or round nose pliers or you could use chain nose just wherever you have whatever you're working with and you can come in here and you can kind of touch and add and if you it turns out that you don't like how it's coming out you can always just wash it all off and try again um, I was very heavy-handed much more so than what I needed to be but I think that that'll be all right so yeah I'm gonna hang this in the same spot that we did before to just let it to just let that hang and dry and I'm going to scooch this so that it catches any drips alrighty so our mushroom is completely dry I'm actually going to re-swirl up <laughs> all of the pigment has kind of settled out of this I don't know, I just, I think the, the rinsing your brush water it turns out so pretty. Now if you had any paint that built up on the tip of your crystal, you can kind of just scrape it off. Or burnish it, or whatever makes you happy. But it just blends in so well with the uh, Aurora finish of the crystals anyhow. Okay. So from here, I'm going to try to find my wire snips. I'll just use these ones. I'm going to do about an inch and a half. I've just snipped our wire. And I'm going to Just coil this down on my mandrel pliers and that's made a nice little loop you could make it however large as you like or small um, but this will be great for just threading onto a cord uh, you could also do a wrapped loop but I find that this kind of keyring style works perfectly 
and we are going to be sealing this with a layer of Mod Podge hard coat. If I can get that, there we go, cap off. And the way that I seal it, I don't really put any um, of the Mod Podge onto the crystal, but I am going to just be smushing it into all the little nooks and crannies because I do want to seal this and I do want it to be nice and shiny. But I just love the way that this paint kind of splits off into almost two or three different colors. It's got that blue, it's got some green tones, it's got that gold, and it just... You could do 20 of these <laughs> in one go, paint them all the exact same, like sculpt them up the same, paint them up the same, which whenever we're producing, um, you know, <laughs> when we're making inventory, we're trying to find a balance of, you know, mass producing handmade things. Um, and this is one of those items that I can follow formulaic, like, like it's a formula every single time and they each come out different and I love it because that keeps it adventurous and so I'm just sealing this you could do multiple coats I really only find the necessity to do one coat and then if it's standing a little too thick I do remove some of the material like some of the sealant just because I don't want it to not dry out. Like, I don't want it to be on so thick that it doesn't dry all the way. And then I've got, like, these little cloudy spots. And now I'm just doing the cap. If you get some Mod Podge on the little metal part, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Making sure I get all the edges and stuff. Okay. Make sure you clean your brush. And then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to thread. You could use a paintbrush or a porcupine needle or whatever you have. And I like to hang it on here like this and oftentimes I'll just open a drawer and brace it in like that just so that way it'll hang without touching anything and I'm going to let this dry completely and then we will come back and take a look at it. Alrighty y'all, so this is how it has come out. Now, I really feel like we could have nestled a lot more pigment down into these. And we could always go through and repaint because I like how nice and dark it is there. That one needs a little bit more. But it's also, I kind of like it just being as it is. But we are going to find a nice sunny spot. Here's one. And we are going to charge this up nice and bright. And then we're going to go inside and see how it glows. So there is no black light going. This is just how this glows here over in this dark corner. And so you can see that's why I really wanted a little bit more pigment in those swirls because it really helps show off the details. But let's see if we can see how this looks. Yeah, that's it. Just an ambient lighting, kind of blurry. Lots of cobwebs, and then this, I mean, it is, it glows intensely, y'all. Like, that is so cool. So this is how the project came out. If you guys followed along, uh, please, like, I love seeing what y'all make, so be sure to tag us online on, like, Instagram or Facebook, um, or you can send us emails, um, with pictures of your work as well. And if you guys have any questions, comments, or requests for future tutorials, please leave those down below. Uh, there's all sorts of ways to help support the channel, join the channel membership, um, join our Happy Crafter Club, or support us on Patreon. Links to all that stuff down in the video description. But more than anything, you guys, I just want to thank you just for being you and for being here. And I will see y'all next time. So until then, 
happy crafting. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>